What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shat Saria, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video general everyday day-to-day -day running errands just being around going around in London what what that was like uh, I loved it everyone's you know familiar with people from all over the world it's just uh, very very diverse in that way different it's languages mm -hmm. different foods just different cultures and so being an, an American I don't think necessarily um, is something that's different. I think being an African American female, it catches people off guard a little bit in certain parts of London. I think, you know, in some of the touristy places in central London, it's like, okay, whatever. But because I live there, obviously, I would go to places that many tourists would not go. And so, you know, kind of going into a shop or something and someone, obviously, you know, I look like this. They don't know how I, I speak my accent. Just and then starting to and then starting to speak, and they realize I'm American. Uh, it would just always be uh, quite funny because they're like, "Oh, you're from America." So that's how y'all test the waters. Y'all approach people to get them to say things to you, mm -hmm. and then y'all be like, "Let me see how that accent sounds." Right. Accent right. check. Y'all be accent check people. Okay. Right, because blacks have been there for a long time. Heard that. You know, so okay. But I could put on a London accent now. Put it on, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. Um, and then I'm like, yeah, they're like, I oh, want Paul. Oh my God, I always want to go there. And, you know, and, and so it was kind of um, just, uh, I don't know, it was it was nice and welcoming. And then, you know, that led to kind of a bit of a, a chat. That wasn't all the time. <laughs> you know, there's been plenty of times you talk to people, they don't give a frick crack where you, where you come from or what kind of accent that you have. But in those instances, it was nice. But yeah, I think for the most part, you know, you get treated just as anyone else. I think for anyone who's looking this to live dope. or to visit in London, you don't really have to worry about some of the issues that you may would in other areas. So okay. I would say definitely go. You'll be welcomed. You'll be treated okay. Nothing to worry about there. Hey, so sorry about that, guys. I'm losing daylight and my camera was just making it way too dark so i'm filming it on my iphone but anyway next thing i want to talk about is you know the african-american experience uh, interacting with other blacks in britain so i guess black brits and this was quite a unique experience for me um just kind of give you guys a, a little history lesson so I have, you know, quite a few American viewers as well, so they may not be as knowledgeable about the makeup of Black Brits, but Black people in Britain tend to be either from the Caribbean or from some uh, country in Africa. So mm -hmm. most people that you meet, they'll be, you know, first, second, third generation um, from those two areas. So both a lot like of times when you meet someone and you, you know, ask them where they're from, that's what they'll say. When, so we, I would get in these conversations and, and right, you know, it's normal and say, hey, where are you from? And I would say, you know, I'm from the States from America and then they'd be like, oh, what part? From Oklahoma. Oh, okay. So, uh, so where's your family from? Oh, uh, they're from Oklahoma. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, but where's your like family? What's your heritage? Where are they from? Uh, very they're common. from Oklahoma, and it's like, yeah, uh, um, very common, which is weird for me because I do know some of the black Brits' history. I don't know all of it, but I do know the important facts of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that other people understand how for us it's it's a troublesome question uh-huh because yeah let me, our let me throw we've been pitch. here for a long time let me throw your mm -hmm. pitch so you have a family that's caribbean you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and you may have another one that is 
uh, somewhere from Africa, correct? Mm -hmm. But they're both living in America. They have a baby okay. that's black. Oh. The baby grows up American. Right. The baby moves out of the Americas to go live in Brit, and they say, where you're from? Mm -hmm. I'm from Missouri. And they be like, no, but where your family from? Mm -hmm. And then that's when the question goes into their, you know, neck of the woods. And see, you just brought up something totally different. Not to loop it back around when the Brits ask, so where you from from? Right. It so, goes to, like, the parents, you know, where your parents from. Right. So I, it's, that's, <laughs> that's a conversation by itself right there. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, so it'd be like, oh, yeah, they're from Oklahoma. And it's like, uh, yeah, but no, like, where really is your family from? And I'm like, um... I don't know what you're asking. Like being black in America because of slavery, a lot of people that are black, you know, and there's a split, you know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. I don't know the percentage wise, but right. a lot of people don't necessarily know their family tree. Right. To say that they're this. So when they say they're from Oklahoma, that's where they are from. Right. Like right. born and that's, raised. That's where the family has been. Um, and then even with the family trees, we are starting to see like the, the great migration, like people in the family tree who escaped the Jim Crow, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I guess because in other places they know that they, they didn't start there. They can trace back their family history. And I feel like that's where the, the, the jokes people a lot of people think it's a joke mm -hmm. that african americans don't know where at in africa you're from and then a lot of pe some people have a problem with us saying african american and then you have to school them on why we stop saying just black and yeah. talking about african american it's Again, a whole big mess it's a lot let us be what, what we what we say we are we are african american <laughs> <sighs> yeah. hey I, and so I, I begin to realize that for them, they know where you know, they're from. It would only be one of two answers: either you be Caribbean, or you would be from from a country in Africa. And again, I would get a little frustrated at some point. I'm not gonna lie, because I felt like my answer wasn't good enough. It wasn't mm. sufficient. And I also felt like, well, you know, um, the Caribbeans didn't they kind of come the same way that we came? You know, I just, <laughs> I didn't get that. So, it it was interesting. Uh, and <clears throat> that part, I, I would say I didn't like so much. Um, trying to kind of justify how I can call myself an African American. Now, I'm not saying this was all black Brits, but there was a fair share of them um, that I would have this exchange with. And, uh, yeah, and I think it's just education on, on both sides in, in regards Definitely. to... You know, African American history, history mm -hmm. yes, it came from slavery, but we can't pinpoint exactly what our origins are. We know Not it's everybody. Africa, obviously, but it's the same as Caribbean, like we all came on a boat together, you know, maybe not together, but we all came on a boat. So <laughs> that was my experience with Black Brits. I think being an american obviously there were certain shared experiences that i didn't have and i think it would be the same as when caribbean or um africans come over to the states and how they don't really have a, a shared experience from for uh to african americans and so it allows you to see things in a different in a different way a different perspective and understand that you know, just because someone may look like you, it doesn't necessarily mean they have walked the path that you've walked. And just to be aware of that, you know, and also not judge for those different experiences that, that we have and be more accepting. So you you know, and, don't, and also don't take it for granted. So that was kind of my experience with 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 that dating in london as an african-american female okay so i personally this was a whole new whole new experience for me <laughs> i think on so many different levels one the dating culture is just different if you haven't seen my video that i did on dating in the uk versus america check that out also i think dating kind of broadening my horizons a bit on who to date so you know I now it's very common for you know african-american women to date anything and everything but back in the day so I was in London around 20 2010 
2016. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of interracial dating back then and here in the States. So a lot of black women were still, you know, kind of primarily dating the brothers. Uh, so when I moved over, I, I wanted to be open to dating wh whomever. I think that depends on your location in the States because, I mean, come on, like, loving, the loving Supreme Court case, like... Interracial? Back yeah. in the day of 2010? That's 100% was, it was okay. Right. Like, I have a in London, high though. school teacher. Well, no, she said in the States, too. Oh, in the States, too? I have location. a high school, school teacher location. who was married to a white man, mm -hmm. so... Oh you know, lord, my. like it's it's in our region. They was mixing it up. Yeah, they was. <laughs> it sure was. Yeah, so and, the, and this is not an opportunity because I'm tired of seeing it. Mm. What do you all think about interracial interracial dating? Oh, the question that comes. Why are y'all asking us? Listen, and this is a perfect opportunity for me to say this right now. Let's hear. Like <laughs> yeah, like let me let's hear. Yeah, I'm ready. If you have to ask someone. For their mm. opinion to validate your choices, that's sad. You shouldn't be dating, period. You and then the way of you're that asking an African American couple, we're not the people to ask. <laughs> ask the people who got experience with it. Yeah, what they go through, you know what I'm saying? How's life for them with that right. choice that they made, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. That was a good one. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to say. What was yours on that one? That was definitely needed to say because I feel like after the question or after the conversation, y'all do ask that. Some people. Every time you know we, every time it come up in the video, y'all ask. Like we, we just don't get it. Don't ask us. We don't know. If you're not sure, you shouldn't be doing it. Right. That's all it is until you I feel just, comfortable enough. I would just say that both sides need to be understanding. Other than that, I don't have an opinion. They definitely should go on a, um, a little field trip. That sounds scary. I mean, no, I mean, you got to take trips back and forth to understand. Okay. The history. One got to know one the side, the other got to know the other side. And okay. Yes. Every, that's all it is. Everybody in the family needs to be accounted know, for. Everybody need to know everybody. <laughs> got to take some walks and that's it. To my surprise, a lot of the men were open to dating me. So, you know, that was good. And I, I really enjoyed it. You know, one of the things that I... I really enjoyed it and you know one of the things that I found in, in, in this process was learning a lot about the different cultures that I had no knowledge of, about before and that was you know just hearing their experience in London again you know the US is very race based and so in the UK it's more about you know where you come from what country and when you're dating you get to see all of those layers in in comparison to dating in the states where it's like oh you're black you're white you're Hispanic you're Asian lump them all together and it's like mm -hmm. well no there are so many differences even within that racial group mm -hmm. that make each individual ethnicity or nationality special and different and unique and I think that's one of the disservices that we have in America in terms of just categorizing people. They're so big, broad, and general. Where in, in the UK, I felt like it was more, uh, it, it, it tends to be more geographic. And so you, you date someone and it's not, oh, they're white, they're, they're black, or they're this or that. It's like, oh, this is where they're from. And then they can give you... Uh, a bit of a history lesson about where they're from and you know p some people's journeys to even how they be, be got to London was fascinating but I but it, one of the things that it also taught me is that every group is different every group has had their own struggles and how they fit in with the greater society is not always as uh, black and white as you may think you know we're always looking yeah, at obviously saying. through our mm -hmm. own lens but there's so many shared experiences there, you know, and how you, know, you... It's like when you, for her, her experience as she's speaking, like coming from the States, you know, it's, it's race-based. You do have all your cultures, all your, you know, ethnicities in, mm -hmm. in their corners, you know what I'm saying? But when you do go to the London and it's not race-based, I, I know for her the approach is mad different. Right, You right. know what I'm saying? The, 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 the walls are probably not as high for her to try to cross over or 
she don't have to have a guard up like she mm. needs to have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm for, I'm pretty sure that approach has a lot more simplicity in there where she can just have a real conversation with a person and not feel like, what's she doing over there talking to that white man? Right, oh, 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 what's right. he doing over there talking to that black girl? Like that type of image, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I was going to say, um, again, I can only speculate <laughs> what the mm. conversations are like here, but if a person was dating, let's say if a black person was dating a white person, you know, going through those tough questions, like, okay, so what your grandfather was doing back in the 60s? Yeah. <laughs> Did you grow up in the sundown town? Yeah. Who your family? You know, yeah. like, questions like that, but I, I yeah, But you, I agree with you that. made a mention earlier that it is about location as well. Because she did make conversations about how whenever she was here, it was race-based, and when she went there, it's like the dating is totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier to get an approach out of people. Right, right. And so, like, with regions here, so it, it is kind of the same but here we're talking about here the 50 states like yeah like we all like, know the history and it's not like that everywhere know? too like we have to make a mention it's not right, that, that racist or that, yeah, it, that everything stereotypical is not environment yeah. it's not like that everywhere yeah it's not everybody don't have those agendas or yeah but motives because we grew up in the south and we're from the south that's at the forefront is your family racist? Would your family accept me? You know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. type. But in London, because it's so diverse, they're specifically talking about country, yeah, culture. You know, people are more receptive. Well, the food is different at yeah, type of know? stuff. Yeah. Relate and connect to other people. And I just found it to be quite refreshing in hearing people and seeing how we connect and how we could relate to each other. You know, some things people just get. And you're like, wow, but you're from like the walls went down right Eastern there. Europe, you right. know, East Europe. But you're from like Poland. How do you identify with me? Or you're from like Bangladesh. Like, how do you, how do you understand like my kind of struggle? But right. And so that is the beauty of our channel, mm -hmm. with being an international channel. You know, we the more we talk about the differences, the more we see just how alike we are in some areas. Bridging them Re gaps. Regardless of the country, regardless of um, the race, mm -hmm. regardless of anything. You know, I love, love, love having those conversations with you guys. That's that, that's that pot of gumbo right there. You know, you, you kind of dig deeper and you, you realize that even as an African-American female, my experience in my country can be very similar to another culture or another mm -hmm. tribe or another mm -hmm. ethnic group mm -hmm. in, in their country. Right. So, uh, not to ramble too much about that, but uh, that was one of the things that, um, the main takeaways that I had from dating as an African-American in, in London, you know, and, I, and another thing I think was because, you know, the African American experience in America is is quite publicized, you know, whether it's pro police brutality, that was really big, um, you know, in certain periods of time when I when I lived in, in London, so that made international news. And so I think that a lot of these ethnic groups could relate and it allowed them to be more open about their own struggles and their experience because they saw kind of what I was coming from. So yeah, not to uh, go yeah, too you, much you on that point, but yeah, <laughs> that's just that. And uh, experience as being an African American in London, I think my key kind of takeaway uh, on this video for you guys would be, you know, I. Being an African American outside of the U.S. is a totally different experience. One that I think every African American should actually experience. That and also going to the continent of Africa for a Definitely. period of time. Yep. And, it, you know, living in the U.S., I think there is this kind of energy in the air. Like I said, it's very race-based, you know, and there's a hierarchy um, that along with that race-based system. And once you step out of your comfort zone and once you step out of this uh, kind of environment that has been created just to make a lot of African Americans feel less than, mm. you get this sense of confidence and pride and it 
it changes the way you view yourself. It changes the way you view the world and other people. And, you know, I came back to the U.S. and I was so confident. And I still am. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm okay with being the only black in any situation. I And staying true to myself as well. And being... Okay, so I want to speak on this because we've shared a bit of a, a lot of stories about, you know, our experiences as being African American. I've never felt that I was less than. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. because of my personal family history and because of always having the interests of my people in this country. Their stories have always given me strength. I've never, ever felt that I was less than anybody. And I have been in plenty of spaces where I, I was the only black person. And had to be true to myself. And <clears throat> y'all see me? <clears throat> yep. Who I am on camera is how I've always been. In any space I've been in. So I just want to make that clear. We all don't feel that we're less than, but I do understand her her talking about the confidence and yeah, hundred percent. I feel like it's, it's based on person. Growing up in the South is either you lay down or you get up. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I feel like I've always had that confidence and and the way our people in the South are, we're prideful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so again, that's why I was saying that you know our experiences are regional. Yeah. As well, um, the South is where majority of the, the bad stuff happened, right? People was escaping with the Great Migration. Um, the people we're from endured. So we built ourselves up. The stories motivated us to be the best that we can be. No, 100%. Um, she definitely sounded like whenever she went there, she had to reintroduce herself. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And a, a lot yeah. of people helped her see herself a lot better. Mm -hmm. So when she did come back, yeah, that's a permanent impression that she had on herself. So right. that's a good thing to have. All right. What, what Beyonce said? What did she I'm say? I'm going back to the South. Yeah. Well, my roots ain't watered down. Well, oh, I was preaching. But a hot sauce in her purse. Hot sauce in my bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me. You know, and I think that's the most important thing is, is just loving yourself, loving where you come from, loving, you know, your own culture, your uniqueness, That's and know true. that you have That's something true. special to contribute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of get out of this system that we're in and just experience it in a different way, experience being black in a different way, a you will... It was mind, it's mind-blowing. And, you know, even having conversations with other African-Americans outside the u.s and they they had similar experiences you know we some of them are like i'm never going back yeah. <laughs> and i honestly i don't blame them because one of the things that you want to experience as being not just an, a, an african-american but just a human as well but i think because of of the unique experience of, of being an african-american you want to be seen for who you are right you want to be not, judged not for who you skin. are, not mm -hmm. the color of your skin, Look at not Look at you know the <laughs> fact that you are black or anything like that. You want to be judge me for me, like have a conversation with me, you know, under, you know, not understand how I think, but you know, see how I think, see how I treat other people, and then judge me. Don't judge me based on the media Still or tight. music, yeah. um, you know, yeah, right. that portrays yeah. my people in a certain way. And I will say. The Afri the media that we put out as African Americans and that we allow to be put out, it doesn't depict us in a very positive way. And so for a, a lot of people, their first impressions of who we are is based on the media. And it's so obvious when you go to different places and you hear music bumping and it's African Americans that are producing this music and it's not positive, you know, and the things that they're talking about. Okay, hmm. so just like earlier I was saying it's regional, this depends on genre. I don't listen to rap. I don't watch reality TV. So I do know what she's saying. She's talking about yeah, reality yeah. TV shows. I absolutely hate that. And because we have prestigious, educated individuals a part of these shows and it's like come on y'all like y'all mm. y'all living the dream 
What happened to the Cosby Show? What happened to Family Matters? Like, what happened that's to That's the stuff like, we need to bring back. If they could remake that in any way, but in a more up to date Bel- speed, Bel Air, that would be fine. I mean, Bel Air is the only one who came out with it. Yeah, like bring that stuff back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I know a lot of my peers because I'm I'm of the same age group of the people who are part of the reality TV may not yeah. like what I'm saying, but to each his own. Like, we not we gotta bring that stuff back. We gotta bring back the the family units. Mm-hmm. Everybody is not. See, I'm, 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 now let I'm me say though, from everybody. Some, some people are easily impressionable, man, and they look mm-hmm. at media and they think they have to be that to people, right. especially their own people. Right. And we don't even need that energy that you're seeing off of TV directed back at us because you thought that was the way to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. it can get a little frustration at, at times whenever. Yeah. But shout out to the Brits though because let, let's speak about her real quick. She went out there and she said when she started dating. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easier for her. And I feel like dating is a more, you know, uh, intimate conversation that yeah, you have with yeah. a person. So shout out to the Brits, because even if you guys were to get a glimpse of the the Afri- the, the black American way of doing things when it came to the music, when it came to things they show in media, mm-hmm. y'all put your guard down still to accept her. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So I think that's a big shout out for them. Right, but I mean, what about Lauren Hill? Play some Lauren Hill when I roll Hill. through, okay? Mm-hmm. Play not some, bad. some who else? Frankie Beverly and Maze. Like, all of our stuff is not just rap. Not just, you know, the things that show us in a negative light. That's why they I feel get the like light, it's, though. it's age they and get genre. Light. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You right. know, so, yeah. Yeah. It's just are very derogatory and people are hearing that before they even get to know an african-american you know so that already puts a preconceived notion of how a group of people are and i'm not excusing you know some of the racism or you know the prejudice that african-americans or black people um face but then some of that we can control as well and, 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 and control the way that our image that we actually put out so, yeah, I won't talk too much about that, but yeah, uh, that was a, a key takeaway. Definitely travel outside the U.S. I recommend it a thousand percent. Again, not everywhere in the world is going to accept you. Not everywhere in our own country <laughs> accepts us. <laughs> but I think uh, there's a lot of positivity out there, and it will do you some good. So mm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Are right, you guys it- gonna stop it right though? Mm-hmm. That was good. <sighs> you gotta sometimes just get out your own shell. Yes. You know what yes. I'm saying, and let that positive light that people want to offer you help you become a better person of yourself. Some people are shy of. Po- some people are really shy when it comes to being around positive people. Mm. Some people are intimidated when they get around positive people. Some mm-hmm. people are fearful when they get mm. around positive people. But that all had to do with where you were coming from and what you was listening to and who was there to kind of like give you that negative outlook on people who actually had a little swag. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, I mean. I feel like, okay, so Brit's going to be a little different. Because, of course, you know, we're going to act accordingly. But just knowing how you all feel about when people say hello. Now, I cannot speak for every American, but y'all do know we from the South. Okay, so um, when Dion and I speak to people and we say, hey, how you doing? We actually mean it. But we're from the South. Okay, so when y'all talk about the American, what y'all call it? American fake smiling or yeah the fake smiling yeah the mask they say we put on a mask it's two times as much because we're from the <laughs> south <laughs> so that's what i'm trying to get y'all to understand when we yeah, say yeah. it we really mean it okay mm-hmm. so when we 100%. come up there there's no date yet but when we come up there and y'all see us on the street y'all better come speak to us okay let us know how, how london really accept london and the uk and brits yeah really accept we don't need no cold shoulders <laughs> We don't need none of that. All right. Yeah. So this was cool. Um, again, this is another being black, blah, 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 in the world. Proud of um, what they're saying, too, though, because yes. I, I feel like they are giving good information back in return. You guys Definitely. are really treating, you know, our people good around the world. Right. And people need to hear this, you mm-hmm. know, because, again, like she said, we know that we're not going to be accepted everywhere. And that's why these videos are important, not only for us, but for 
the black diaspora, the African mm -hmm. diaspora. All right. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks. If you like, support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.